Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and I just want to say welcome back to listening parties. I know it's been a minute since I've had one. I think the last one was uh, I Prevail's True Power listening party, and yeah, I apologize for not doing these as much as the reactions, but either way, we're back. I found out very recently that Scene Queen has a uh, has a new album out called or a new ep whatever out called bimbo core uh volume two and i was very much surprised to find that out like i knew she came out with the song barbie and ken because i did a reaction to that but that's about it i didn't realize that there was anything else that she like released besides that and then you know i just stumbled upon decided to check back and boom an ep album whatever but either way, so I'm excited to be uh, back with uh, Bimbo Core. It's got the pink sweatshirt on, of course. Oh, and not only am I back with the listening parties, I'm also back with the new camera. So hopefully the quality is looking better. Uh, to me, it looks nice. So hopefully it translates through the editing and the uploading and blah, 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 blah. But anyways, I, yeah, I don't really know if I have much to say going into this, you know. She has a very interesting sound. I think it's like the same trap metal thing, but she puts her own spin on it, which to me makes it, you know, more memorable, especially when they got some bangers like Pink Panther and Barbie and Ken, but Pink Panther's like my favorite so far. But anyways, after all of that, we got more songs. She's blowing up. I mean, signed to Hopeless Records too. I was surprised to hear she was, but I'm happy to see that she's growing and yeah there's really not much more to say into this other than i'm excited for uh bimbo core volume 2 so with all that being said pull up the album on any phone or another tab or whatever that you listen to music on and let's listen along to bimbo core ah bimbo core volume 2 by scene queen i think i've had pink whitney before Pink Whitney is like the, the, the pink lemonade vodka, I believe. If that's right, then it's not bad. It's very distorted 808s. I like that. See, I can't remember the first EP that much, but I don't know if they ever really had like the... Like the two parts ever blend that much. Maybe like one shot. I only said that because there was like a little bit of the guitar going on. Oh, good using. I like the panning. I like panning. Bro, I know I found out and I've been told... Who's on the music? I think his name's Zach or whatever, but he kills it. It's so heavy. I want to see how he produces. I hope that there's like somewhere I can find out how he produces these songs. I think I, I think there's one thing that I like. It's how she's leaning into it too. I remember at one point those the, the 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 harmonic sweeps they had like control over me when I was writing music. Ooh, cool rhythm. And palm muted too. And then called JG Wentworth. I should have paid attention more to the lyrics. It came out of nowhere to me. <laughs> this. <laughs> the beginning of this just sounds like something that I could imagine being like a YouTuber trying to make music. Hmm. 
Hmm. Man, I do feel old. I don't even know. Were there? Is there a camera on a flip phone? <laughs> you know, it's funny. She says I do my own promo TikTok, but I have not seen her on TikTok at all, which is insane. If that's how, like, she got big. I saw her on Instagram first, actually. But I can't remember if it was, like, an ad or somebody else reposting her. <laughs> this sounds that's something that I could imagine happening in an Attila pit oh, I thought it was about to hit it's a nice synth There it is. That's the drop. I just noticed that the synth playing for this. Dun, dun. I feel like. Ooh, a guitar solo. I... Or. I mean. All right, cut it early. Maybe not a guitar solo, but that was a nice little riff. Harmonic minor, come on. Huh, I wonder if this is going to be more of a ballady type of thing. Alright, nah. I might be wrong here, but anybody else getting like a Halsey vibe from like that intro? You know, I think I don't listen to much Halsey, but I don't know. I'm getting like a her vibe on this one. I like the distortion they put on the vocals here. Though I will say, are you really a musician who makes nothing but party music if you don't have at least one song about how, about, about drug dependency and the loneliness of it? What do you think? Do you put food coloring in cocaine to get it to be pink or would you... Or is it laced with something? No, I'm overthinking it, but it's just uh, for the theme, but still. Dude's back with the panning, at least. <laughs> Man, this is why I like production. I, I know I'm talking more about the music. It's just where I'm at. But hearing, like, the guitars on the sides and then that da -da 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 down the center. It just... Playing with panning is always fun. You should definitely try it if you don't.
I think I want to see her alive. I want to see her screaming. Like, <laughs> that's funny. But I want to see her like scream live because I really like it. But I want to know. I think the idea of seeing someone screaming is like interesting. Or maybe I can find a live video. I don't know. It layers really nicely with her, too. <laughs> yeah, no, she kills it. And then using the distortion. I like distortion on screaming vocals. If I wasn't getting a, like a Halsey vibe before, I think I am now. <laughs> We're doing a slow build up on this one. I thought it was just doing like an offbeat hi-hat, but no, it just wasn't hearing the downbeat once. It's really nice ARP synth too. If this is Mothica, they have a really nice voice. I might actually have to give him a listen after this. I actually really like this one, honestly. I think so far, favorite on this album. Or EP, whichever it is. Oh, if this gives a brutal breakdown, then I don't think it is. Okay, I don't think it is. I gotta respect it. Anybody who's been following me for a while knows I don't like breakdowns in every song. Oh, this one's got everything. Honestly, I was really hoping that Cody would bring it, throw it way back to like, uh, to like uh, cinematics and that problem cover and just like absolutely unleash screaming wise. But I like the music on this one too. How crazy would it be if this was in the Barbie movie? That would actually be hysterical. You know, honestly, it didn't even sound like Cody was singing notes there, but yeah. But yeah, she got a good harmony there. Turn that back. I'm a Ferrari. Will you let me cut your head off? I have to tell you that I'm sorry. Mm. Amityville. I don't know why. I'm looking at the lyrics and I looked away for a moment to groove and I thought he said Andy DeVille. I was like, who is that? Amityville.
And the sound design, too. If there's one thing I also really like, it's when the kicks match with a uh, machine gun thing. I don't know why. It's like the Headhunter music video. Mm. Nice. This beat's all solid. It's funny, if I ever tried using like an 808 like this, I just couldn't. Mm. Nice. Nice. This one is... Is this a beat switch? I'm trying to think. I feel like there's a TMG song that does that. And I think it's their 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 rich people song. That whole like I fuck, did I tell you that I fuck thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm rich or poor like when Cody was doing that bit. They're also doing like time signature swaps too for these a little Like, screw it, let's just let her pop off with her vocals. <laughs> Bro, I'm not gonna lie, this would go so hard live. I thought I heard my dog bark for a second for some reason. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna go see Scene Queen live and but like get an all pink fit for it. I like to just go straight back into a six eight feel with this. That's wonderful. Uh, I didn't realize that was the last song on this album. I haven't. I've only been looking at the lyrics all the time, not following the album. I just was really hoping that this was how it actually ended out. This came out November tenth. I really like just dropped the ball on this one, but that was fun. That was fun. I think, in all honesty, it started off fine. I think in the Rapture, Barbie and Ken and Pink Hotel, it was like, I want to say a dramatic increase. I don't want to say dramatic because it was pretty solid from the beginning. Like, I feel like it was definitely more of the same 
for the most part with this album ep look i keep going back and forth because even though it's seven songs it's less than 20 minutes and i don't know if it changes being an album from an ep depending on time length or song length like if i'm looking at song length it looks like album but if i'm looking at time length it looks like ep but still with this collection of music <laughs> with this collection of music uh yeah, I want to say for the most part, it was more of the same, but it was the same that worked with the last EP for sure. And I think like the last three just did like a ramp up in quality. Like the Rapture Mothica absolutely killed it. Like legitimately, I think I'm going to look them up after this one because... Like I've seen like they they just released some music or whatever. But I, I it takes a minute for me to want to like get into something. But like absolutely killed it. So I definitely have to look them up. Barbie and Ken is just a fun one. Uh definitely a fun one. And I think it's funny that it's the only song that doesn't actually have the word pink in it somewhere. Like the rapture, it's the rapture, but it's pink. <laughs> And then Pink Hotel, that was a wonderful way to end it. I will say that the the whole choir part at the end didn't like naturally go back, but at the same time, I'm happy that it ended like that. I think just doing a, an abrupt ending on this would have been... Yeah, oh, it says EP at the top. I didn't even notice that. Sorry, I just, just peeped that. I mean, because like, let's see here. We got 17 minutes on this one with seven songs, plus the first one being 13 minutes, so... It's about 30 minutes and 13 songs like that's basically a full album i wonder if uh now it's just focusing on tour until you know until like maybe next year i wonder i can't wait for more music to be released or if she's just working on eps or whatever you know but no pink hotel great way to end out the album barbie and ken a very fun one the the rapture but it's pink i'm glad that Mothka was on it because I think they really elevated something there. And I think the Rapture, but it's pink, was the most unique out of all of them. That one and Pink Cocaine. Pink Cocaine, I'm a little iffy on. Then again, some of the songs I say I'm iffy on sometimes end up being my favorites. But that one, eh. I don't do drugs alone by myself because I don't really do drugs at all. So I don't think that one's going to relate. But, but... I think the rapture just has a nice feel to it that makes that one just i feel like just hits you know again then again i can't really remember all of these now because <laughs> i just listened to them pretty much all but barbie and ken for the first time so i think if i remember that one as i do that one had like the build up through like the verse and chorus and blah 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 but no that was a fun one I mean, I'm enjoying it. I feel like uh, whatever success that Scene Queen has is deserved. And I can't wait to see what more she does. Genuinely, I think I want to go see her in concert now. Get like some pink pants, a pink beanie. I almost tried buying a pink pink, pink, pink beanie for uh, this video. But it wouldn't have been here in time. And I didn't find one I liked. So it was big, no big deal. It was whatever. But... You know, it's fine. We chilling. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I enjoyed that. And I hope you did too. Definitely give her the love and appreciation. But with all that being said, I hope y'all have a great rest of your night or day. Peace.